and we're live hi everyone i am coach kayla rusher dietitian online dietitian nutrition and run coach and i'm here with my friend bill and he is been he has been a lifelong athlete and he now does triathlons and is an amazing i think inspiration <laughs> for a lot of us especially us that want to be lifelong athletes um, later in our life so we're going to talk to bill and he's going to tell us about his story and all things about being an athlete um we'll talk maybe we'll talk a little bit about nutrition um as well and kind of how he has you know been learning and and where he's going with all of that as well so if you are joining us live let us know you are live let us know you're here um, if you're watching this on replay just let me know um, let us know below in the comments below that we're watching this on replay also we're going live using Streamyard. Um, i think most of you already know this but um, if you don't if you're new here just make sure to click that link above this video um, and so your name shows up here when um, the comments and stuff come up but We'll get started. So, Bill, tell us tell us about yourself. When did you become an athlete? And yeah, we'll start there. Well, Kayla, thank you in advance, and thank you for what you're doing with this plant based nutrition. So, you're I hope welcome. everybody's tuning into that. It's really, really good. Yeah, I've been fortunate. So, if you do the easy math, um, I was a child in the '50s, and I was a teenager in the '60s. <laughs> and back then, you know, you either went outside and played or you watched a black and white TV or you talked on a landline telephone. So there weren't <laughs> a lot of distractions. So I was fortunate. I grew up in a neighborhood. I'm, I'm the oldest of four boys. And so we were all playing something. And uh, again, fortunate enough to go to college as a recruit to play in a, in a top 15 basketball program. If you don't have a basketball, all you do is run and jump. Uh, and that was uh, a real experience. Um, you learn that uh, at that level, it's a real business. Um, but um, so unfortunately, um, I ran into some back issues and long story short, I had four back surgeries, <clears throat> excuse me, from the time I was about 20 till I was 28. And that was back before there were CAT scans and MRIs. So I wound up on the last surgery with a, an L4 to S1 fusion where they just took bone off my hip and grafted over the lower two vertebrae. And when I checked out of Duke University, they said, um, you know, there'll be no more running. And there'll be no more whatever, 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 which was fine, but the running didn't didn't sit well. And so they said, well, there will be no more running, but there should be no more running. So they kind of gave me an opening. So anyway, I didn't run for 10 years. Um, I just found I could play a little tennis to get exercise. And then my wife started running 5Ks and I said, I just can't stand and watch this. I got to go try. Mm -hmm. And I found I could run. and I just get a headache. Like, I mean, I get a backache like I get a headache. And so I started running 5Ks. Um, fast forward, um, I was I played golf in college as well, and I liked amateur golf. And so when I turned 55, I qualified for senior status. I qualified for a senior amateur tournament, and the week before, I was in a hospital with a, a, a kidney issue. And the urologist said, um, yeah, you got a golf tournament next week, but you won't be playing. I said, no, I, it's a big tournament. I got a piece of no, you won't be playing. Long story short, uh, I didn't get to play. I tried to qualify for another tournament. That didn't work out. And then that summer, I met somebody that uh, from Wilmington, North Carolina, that said the largest promoter of triathlons is based in Wilmington. Again, long story short, um, I thought, well, you know what? That sounds interesting. Uh, and um, so I just went for it. And uh, the, my first triathlon, I was probably just in my late 50s. And the first triathlon had three flat tires, three flat oh, tires no. in the first triathlon. So it's like, wow, it, it's got to get better than this. Um, and then um, because my back was going to be a little bit of issues, um, I found a, um, a running club in the neighboring Greensboro, North Carolina. And just so happened the coach um, was uh, a young female, two times Ironman finisher, nursing degrees, sports medicine degrees, and that group was training for marathons and half marathons, and I didn't want to run it either. I just want to learn how to run better. Mm -hmm. So that training started in, in January, and by the, the, the first <clears throat> big marathon, half marathon, was the first of May. 
And about two weeks before that, uh, the coach said, you know, you can run a half marathon if you want to. I said, well, I've already, I've already uh, registered for a triathlon. She said, okay, that's fine. And then I thought, well, you know what? I might, let's just go ahead and try the half marathon. I've never run that far. I've run nine miles one time. So let's try it. And so I did. It took me two hours and 30 minutes, uh, <laughs> but I finished. Yay. And then um, I saw where the first, what would have been my first half iron man was only about six months later in November. And I just said, I got to go try this. And so that's where it started. That's where it started. So I was fortunate to, I was fifth out of 11 or 12. What I didn't know, so tell you how bad my run was, I was second when I came off the bike out of the swim, out of the bike, I was second in my age group, but four guys passed me on the run. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, so running running's always been a challenge as much as I like to run, um, but I, I worked real hard on it. So the next year I found I only missed the national championship qualifying time by 15 minutes. I went back to the, to the half Ironman uh, and really ran, <clears throat> was able to run a two-hour, 25-minute marathon at the end of, of that, uh, that bike. Mm-hmm. And that qualified me for national championships the following year. And I was able to finish in the top 10 out of 37 in my age group. I was 63, 64. And that qualified me for USA Triathlon's big money maker, the world team. So I was going to go to Spain to qualify and uh, I mean, to compete at half Ironman championships. And then I had knee surgery for the first time ever and couldn't go. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. But. You know, I've still been competing, um, and um, it's just the running with the with that back issue is a challenge. But there are ways to there are ways to work through it. So I'm working with a physical therapist, mm-hmm. and I've got races coming up this year. Hopefully, because I got canceled last year. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, awesome, awesome. So, what are you looking forward to this year, or what do you have coming up? Well, um, last year, again, I was, I was fortunate to be selected to this Blue 70 uh, triathlon race team. Blue 70 is a, a design and marketing uh, manufacturing company of high-end uh, technical wetsuits. Um, so for open water swimmers, competitive open water swimmers or triathletes, they've been around a long time. And all the, tra- all the triathlon were canceled last year for the most part. So we're going to be looking this year where we think they'll open up. I actually have a duathlon coming up next weekend. Um, which could be real cold here in North Carolina, but it's a short, short um, run, bike run. Mm -hmm. And then triathlons will open up probably in uh, April. So, and we hope that nationals, I've qualified for nationals last year. So hopefully they'll do that in Milwaukee again this year. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. So. So cool. That's so exciting. So awesome. Well, it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. So how have you been able to still, you know, keep up your training along with all these, you know, little injuries and things? Well, you know, it's, while it's frustrating, it gives you time to kind of uh, step back and and kind of reassess uh, because obviously the older you get, the more recovery time you need and you really need to be, um, you know, aware of avoiding injuries Mm -hmm. and, I can tell that in the last 10 years, my recovery time, I only used to, to use one day and I was fine. Now I really need two days of recovery mm-hmm. um, because usually it's uh, three runs a week, three bikes a week, three swims a week, and then a couple of strength training sessions. So you can do the, the math. If you're only going to do it five days, it's, it's tough. And so, mm-hmm. but you know, you, you learn and there's, there's a new book out called 80, 20, that 80% of your workouts ought to be at the easy pace level. 10% at the medium pace and then 10% hard mm-hmm. uh, for triathlon training. And I don't know whether that applies to, to runners like yourself or not, but there may be some value in that, you know, particularly as you get older, I think that, um, mm-hmm. and then paying more attention to nutrition, which is what I've really tried to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that I found your site uh, because, <laughs> because the learnings are great. Um, I know probably just enough to be dangerous, but you know, I have nutritional challenges too, like sugar. <laughs> oh yeah. Sugar's hard. We all do. We all love hard. sugar. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. Real tough. It is. It is. So how have you changed your nutrition? 
Well, I definitely, I, you know, I like vegetables. So it's not a matter of whether I'm trying to, to eat something I really don't like. There are very few mm-hmm. veggies that I would say I, I, I wouldn't like. Avocado, I don't, I just never really. But anyway, so, um, and I've never been a, a, a big meat eater, but uh, the older I've gotten, um, the more, of course, just wanting to stay really fit and weight management. Um, I found that uh, I just have migrated more to, to vegetables. I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm not there totally. Um, mm-hmm. And every now and then, you know, I'm going to eat a cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, it's not weekly. It's not weekly, and okay. it's not. Uh, you know, I don't. It, you know, I'm not going through the fast food places like I did maybe 30 years ago. So mm-hmm. um, it's it's pretty easy stuff, and there are a lot of good grocery stores that carry really good food. And um, I was in the nutritional business for a while. And I remember our North Carolina legislature said, you know, we're trying to get the schools to change. But they want a lot of money to change to healthier foods. And we're telling them, no way. It's not that more expensive. It doesn't cost that much. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I've been focused on that a a lot more. So I think I'm making progress. Um, I'm not as scientific about it as some athletes would be, some younger athletes. But then um, I still... I still enjoy eating healthy and, and mm-hmm. I just, I just really got to, my sugar levels are always fine, but I feel like I consume too much sugar. Mm-hmm. But my blood work wouldn't say that. Right. But you know, it's, um, it's something I would really like to move away from. Yeah, sure. So, sure we, know, so. we know sugar causes cancer and right. Things, things like that. Yeah. The inflammation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Inflammation, the yeah. silent killer, and and so I've been big on anti-inflammation for years, mm-hmm. uh, and I think I've been fortunate to find some some uh, supplements that that work that work for me. Yeah. So mm-hmm. yeah, I've been blessed there. Good, good. So, what are supplements that you currently take? Well, um, some some curcumin, uh, turmeric, um, some um, omega threes sixes and nines. Uh, and I've always taken a multivitamin probably since I was in college. I just, for some reason, uh, I was so active. I just, and I've taken, uh, so now I'm using more of a, a plant food-based uh, multivitamin called Alive. I think it's Alive and there's one for senior citizens sort of thing. So they just uh, changed their formula again to try to get more plant-based, more f- foods-based Mm-hmm. So okay. I can tell a difference. I mean, I can tell it because I had another another knee that was mimicking the first one that I had surgery on. And since I've been taking those for two years, no pain, no issue whatsoever. Yeah, so, that's great. That's great. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it just shows you, right, that nutrition. I mean, ideally, food is, is best, right? But even, even sometimes supplements can really help and yeah. And, and that's a really hard market because there's so much out there. Mm-hmm. And I was in the pharmaceutical right. business years ago, and, and there's just so much the government doesn't look at. They don't mm-hmm. have time to look at it. Um, and so you really have yeah. to do the you have to do the science. You really have to look at who's marketing, who, what's yeah. the storyline? Is it just another please buy me gimmick sort of thing? But um, mm-hmm. you know, like picky bars. Uh, for uh, not supplements, but there are health foods I think are really good for athletes. Mm-hmm. It, was de- it was developed, the company's developed by athletes. So, you know, they've got a really good uh, performance oatmeal. So there's some really healthy stuff out there. Oh, awesome. really, really I haven't heard of them. Hmm. Yeah. I'm big into yeah. Laura bars. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. You know, I see those all over I the place. I like those a lot. Up. Yeah, uh, I like them just because they're three ingredients. So mm-hmm. it's just there's not there's not all that junk in it. Um, yeah. It's pretty much dates and you know whatever else they put in it. Um, I've actually tried to also to make my own, you know, date mm-hmm. bars yeah. or date balls. I'm like, oh, these are really just dates. <laughs> it's yeah. really not that yeah. hard to make. But well, picky, bar, picky bars are like that. They're they're out of Oregon and it's just P I C K Y bars. You ought to take a look at them. They're yeah. really good. Um, in fact, I think one of the uh, one of the founders of the company, she was an NCAA 5K champion, I think, or a 10K wow. champion. And her husband was a professional triathlete. He just retired to take care of more of the business after he's in his early 40s. But he was a big time yeah. triathlete. He was, yeah, he was on the pro circuit. It was good. So anyway, it's wow. worth looking at. 
They're, they're good. Very cool. And are they plant-based or vegan? Uh, yes. You know? In fact, here is their their, their yeah. performance their performance oatmeal bag right here. Oh, nice. And it's got uh, if you can read, it's got um, yeah. seed gluten-free, not free. Gluten-free. Yeah, it's it's the real deal. Nice. Vegan. Yeah. Great. So anyway. Cool. <laughs> That's a good Very one. Cool. Scratch Labs is another one that um, I've used. Where did that go? Mm -hmm. You know Scratch Labs? Anyway. I've heard of that. Yeah, I've heard of them. Well, I'm not getting it up there. But anyway, uh, Noon, the Noon Hydrations. Yeah. Yeah. So there's I mean, lots of lots of choices. So you have to find something that works for you. Mm -hmm. uh, you do. And I, live in hot, and I live in hot weather now. You're in Florida. You know, you kind of know yes. what. <laughs> what I, I I had a home in Fort Lauderdale one time, and it was like yeah. this just brutal. Uh, yeah, just, yeah, I haven't experienced summers yet, but everyone's been warning me. They're like, yeah. "No, this is this is perfect running weather right now, yeah. but it'll yeah. it'll get hotter." And it's thirty six degrees and raining outside here in North Carolina. Yeah. So it's, yeah. Ooh, yeah, chilly, definitely chilly. It is. Yeah. Mm hmm. Cool. But it's okay to run into cold rain every now and then. It's okay. Yes, it is. It is. It, toughens, it toughens you up, right? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I, I, listen, I've had a triathlon where it was just raining so hard, the water coming off the uh, ground was bouncing up to your knees sort of thing, and it was 50 degrees. And yeah. when you cross the finish line, you just went and got in your car and went home. Oh, <laughs> no. nobody, nobody was waiting around. In a, in a, I mean, it was just a torrential downpour, 50 right, degrees, yeah. and just nasty weather. But, yeah, you know. Yeah. That's oh, what yeah, happens. Yeah. It happens. Yeah, you sure. can't you can't always have that perfect race day weather. So nope. sometimes you have to be prepared. Mm -hmm. Sure, definitely. Um, cool. So let's see. So tell us more about let's see, moving towards I want to talk more towards like um moving towards more of a plant-based approach. So what was your, mm -hmm. you know, interest or what was, was there anything that you watched or learned about that you kind of realized that, Oh, I want to start eating more plants and. You know, I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure I can point to just one you know, epiphanal moment. Um, I do know that when I started competing in triathlons um, and um, you know, it was, it was quite obvious very, very quick that weight was critical and it's mm -hmm. not that I was overweight, but I could, you know, I could stand a little to lose some if I really wanted to compete and not just, you know, do the race and say I did it, which is, sure. which I, I didn't want to just do that. So I would say, yeah, when I turned, you know, I was in my probably late fifties, I just said, you know, let's, let's do more of a focus on really getting healthy. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's probably, probably when I started just trying to, to read and and look around, but but more casually than than scientifically, I'll have mm -hmm. to say. Um, so but I would yeah, I think when I started when I started competing in triathlons, that that's when I said, okay, you know, you really need to focus on on the eating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really did. So yeah. so so the more competitive you got, it sounded like you were like, oh, I really need to start paying attention to my nutrition. Yeah. Yeah. That and just overall health. I mean, you know, I just wanted to right. just to say, look, you know, you're it, it for me, it was hard to feel like I was healthy playing golf, even though I went to the gym. Mm -hmm. It was like golf was really neat, but it was like I'm exercising, but it's not it's not <laughs> really. Yeah, it's not, I'm not really burning up a lot of calories here unless I'm carrying my bag. and It's 95 degrees outside. And so yeah, I would say I would say the sport of triathlon really kind of said, okay, now you really got to start thinking about nutrition and healthy eating. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah definitely. And so it sounds like for you, it was more. Was it? Do you think it was more health at least, or do you think it's more performance, or is it both? I think it's both. And, and if I could share something else with you, uh, our yeah. two children, a boy and a girl, um, they were competitive swimmers, and they wound up um, swimming with the. Um, the national team in Fort Lauderdale where the coaches were Olympic coaches and they had American record holders. And um, I began to see that um, through their training, they didn't want sweets. They didn't ask for candy. They didn't ask for soda. I mean, and they were training hard, you know, five and a half, six days a week. Um, and 
I mean, they were in such great shape. I thought, wow, you know, I didn't grow up a swimmer. <sighs> I was a swimmer, and one of her brothers was a swimmer at UNC Chapel Hill. But I bounced off water. I just soon go play basketball. But when I saw the when I saw the kids go through that and not want the stuff that I was used to eating, I said, "Wow, that's there's something there because you know these guys can move mountains. Um, so maybe I need to start taking a look at better nutrition." So, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. gotcha. Sure. And to this and to this day, they don't um, they don't migrate to a lot of sweet stuff at all. Mm-hmm. That's great. That's great. Yeah, and did they did they eat like did they eat healthy when they were young, or yeah, yeah. I mean, we pretty much um, since both my wife and I came from athletic backgrounds, we pretty much you know we didn't yeah. they didn't walk into a refrigerator with you know liter bottles of soda sort of right, thing, right. candy bars. Those were more treats, mm-hmm. you know. And I did have one Olympic coach. He said, you know, after a really hard workout give it about two hours and then go drink an eight ounce can of Coke or something. Cause you need the CO2 replacement. No way. Yeah. That was news. I don't know. whether I don't, wow. I didn't, I didn't investigate the science on that. I figured if he's an Olympic coach and you know, if he says it's okay to do that, then it must be. Interesting. But, Isn't so, that crazy? <laughs> but those are hard, hard workouts. You know, that'd be, yes. yeah, they're, they're not just, 30 minute routines. Those are probably two, three, four hour type right. workouts. Right. Yeah. 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 Sometimes the calories, it might not really matter when you're working out that intensely or that long, but we certainly know nutrition yeah. still, still matters and how you feel. I know. I, yeah. don't, I don't think soda makes me feel good. <laughs> yeah. You know, so it's to me, to me, it, well, to me, it's, oh, yeah. It's more of a relaxing drink to me for some weird reason. Yeah. I don't drink a lot of coffee and I don't drink a lot of booze, but it's, mm-hmm. it's sometimes it's just relaxing. You know, if I've been out on a bike for four hours and it's 90 degrees outside, mm-hmm. you know, a 12 ounce can of Coke tastes pretty good. <laughs> sure. <laughs> it tastes pretty good. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Cool. So, Let's see. What else? What else can you tell us about your journey and kind of where you're at? Well, you know, sometimes uh, I had uh, somebody ask me uh, last year or two years. They said, "Why do you keep doing this?" <laughs> you know, I mean, why? Why do you? What do you? What are you gonna, and I said, "Well, I said, you know, I think most people do things they enjoy doing." Mm-hmm. So I said, "I do enjoy it," and I said, "You know, I, I do like to compete." Um, and I just felt, you know, it's, it's turned into a very healthy lifestyle for me um, because I used to run all the time. I love to run, especially trail running. Um, mm-hmm. But, um, you know, just that sport by itself, uh, the fact that I have attention deficit disorder, which, which genetically runs in my family, it's not a food allergy. It's not some voodoo stuff. You know, we, I do have um, a little trouble concentrating, but I'm not hyper by any means. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's neat for me to have three, three sports to bounce around between. Um, mm-hmm. so that's what I really liked about that. And it's just like, well, I'm not ready to give it up. Um, yeah. I mean, when I show up for races now, uh, in my age group, 70 and over, there might be three guys there. Mm-hmm. Sometimes there's nobody there, but me. And, you know, I, on the one hand that could be depressing, <laughs> On the other hand, it's uh, I, I go back to the time I spent in the neurosurgical ward um, when I had my last operation at Duke and there were no private rooms. I was in a room with five other people and I looked across the hall and that door was open and that's where the paraplegics and the quadriplegics were. And I was 28. And so after the surgery, I was in a room with just one other guy and uh, he was an athlete he was a lot older than i was but he went back to playing semi-pro baseball and tore up his graft so he was back at duke um, for an experimental putting electrodes in a spinal column and wearing a little box and when he felt pain he hit the switch and it overrode the pain and i thought you know what um i don't want to give up a- athletics but i'm going to really take care of myself yeah. And so every now and then I revert back to that and say, you know what? I'm pretty dadgum lucky. Mm-hmm. I really am. Of all the unfortunate <laughs> happenings, the fact that I can still compete in, in triathlons at some level, 
um, you got to count your blessings. And, and the other thing, you know, it's you got to find uh, something that's that's fun and you enjoy mm-hmm. doing and keep it in perspective and, and not try to feel like you're, you know, everybody wants to go to Kona. <laughs> but, mm-hmm. you know. And by the way, you may know this, the only world, the only six time world Kona champion was was vegan. Really? He was vegetarian. This was back in the 80s and early 90s, I think. And the popular theory there was there's no way. There's no way that you can do nothing but go veggies and win at that level. And he won and he won six. And I'm trying to remember his name, but you can probably Google it and, and find out. Yeah. So that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. How old was cool. he? I'm sure those guys are usually in their late 30s, could be mid 30s to early 40s at okay. that level. I'm not sure. And he may have been Australian. Again, I, mm, I, okay. I should not know, but I should know. But um, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, he won six Kona championships and he was vegan. So Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah. So yeah. cool, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. So cool. So you want to keep continuing to do it? It sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. Like until, yeah. It, it's fun. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. It's fun. Um, so again, yeah. I mean, yeah. At some point in time, you just step aside and say, "Wow, I'm, I'm very fortunate." Yeah, I've mm-hmm. had some injuries and I've had some challenges, mm-hmm. but you know, there are a lot of people probably would love to be doing what I'm doing, and they can't just because of some really serious stuff. Yeah. Um, and. Um, so, you know, um, given the fact that uh, our overall health in the United States is not good, we're either the number one or number two most overweight country in the world. It's usually a battle between us and Mexico. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you look at healthcare care costs, if we would all just do a better job and, and listen to people like you, mm-hmm. I think we could we could lower we could lower our cost. Yes. You know, I mean, if you look at every, medical costs are just huge. I mean. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, know. My, I know. My spinal That's surgery, bad. my spinal surgery was ten thousand dollars in nineteen seventy eight, and I think the surgery today is close, close to two hundred thousand. Wow. Yeah. I don't think so, the general person can afford that. Yeah, I mean, you got to have some kind of major Ooh, insurance good. policy. For yeah, that yeah, that's a great insurance. So, wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. definitely something to taking care of yourself. You know, physically and nutrition. Right. And just staying fit is just it's right. It's important not just to avoid chronic diseases, but also right. Keep yourself out of the hospital. And yeah. Yeah. You don't want to be in the hospital. And, you know, I think the new science is that even if you did nothing else but walk 20 minutes a day, mm-hmm. there are big health benefits from doing that. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah. I think, I think we over, you know, overestimate really that you know, that even walking is good for us. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, definitely, I think anything to get us moving and that just we like to do is so important. Like I, I've actually tried a triathlon and I was like, I don't know about this. <laughs> I think I might speak <laughs> for the running. Um, maybe one day. I'm still well, Doria, don't, don't high. Like, oh, don't give up on try it. it again. <laughs> yeah, don't give up on it. You'll, you'll get addicted. It's fun. Yeah, it's fun. yeah. But, but that's yeah. the key. I think really that's the key that you said is, yeah. is you want to do what makes you makes it that's fun. That's fun for you that you enjoy doing that, you know, helps, you know, helps improve your health, but also is fun for you. Right? Yeah. And I think it's, um you know, it's, it's the mental part of it's very healthy too, not just physical, the mental health. So, you know, I think yeah, it yeah. helps, it just helps your, your outlook. Mm-hmm so to speak, when, when, you know, you got those bad days or those, you know, downs that come yeah. all seem to come you know, what, regardless of what business you're in, you know, they're good mm-hmm. days or bad days. And I think yeah. it just makes you more resilient to, to the uh, loads yeah. that, um, that you're going to run into. So, mm-hmm. but uh, that's why, you know, that's why one of the reasons I always liked running because it was a great way just to didn't need a lot of gear. And mm-hmm. just walk out the front door wherever you lived, more than likely. And yeah. uh, like right now, um, I have very little level street around me. So I do a lot of hill repeats mm-hmm. um, that can get boring. But, um, yeah, just be able to walk out the door and run, yeah. that's a gift. 
that's a gift that I think more people, and I know the, the medical community is kind of, you know, I, I had an orthopedic surgeon tell me, you just, you can pay me now, pay me later, stop running. Oh, and, yeah. and, and then now the orthopedic surgeon I go to says, I know what you're doing. Just find a soft surface. Go, go find a soccer field, a grassy field. Yeah. You know, or or the treadmill now is my one of my better friends, not the treadmill anymore. Mm-hmm. So, right. so you, know, you can mix you, around. You can just mix it up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I think that's really the key is mixing yeah. up. So I think a lot of us can run daily right on road and that might not always be the best for our joints and our bones, but you know, we can do trail and treadmill and mix it up. Well, when I was running back in the right before the surgeries in the seventies and when I, that was back when you probably know the name Steve Prefontaine, mm-hmm. there, there was a big, everybody that was a runner wanted to go out and run 10 to 15 miles every day. It, it wasn't, let's just go jog two miles or run three miles. I mean, people were running 10 and 15 a day, just your mm-hmm. casual people. They got the fever. And that's when my orthopedic surgeon at Duke said, you see these people running 15 miles a day, they're killing themselves. He said, at some point in time, they will be in an office with major ankle damage, knee damage. And then somewhere, one of the surgeons said something about when you run, you transfer six times your body weight through your legs. Have you heard that? Know that? I don't know. But anyway, apparently it's a lot of weight that when you're when you're running that you transfer through the legs, the hips, mm-hmm. the legs. Yeah, so. I that. yeah but anyway. Um, they're, they're benefits. I think the benefits outweigh the, the negatives. So yeah, absolutely. That's what I've always felt as yeah. well is, you know, for me personally, running was always a stress relief. Like it helped my stress and manage my anxiety. Yeah. And then I also just, you know, I, I felt good. I was in a better mood when I'd get back. Yeah. Um, even yeah. when I, when I don't run, you know, my sniffing other, he still knows like, When's the last time you ran? You know, <laughs> yeah. you just can tell, right? Yeah, that um, endorf- the endorf- endorphin release is really, uh, really good. It yeah. really is. It yeah, really it makes, is. I think, yeah. I think that's what really hooked me with running yeah. was just that that endorphin. But now, pair, you know, pairing up the athletics with what you're doing is just going to be really, really important for particular for, for people of all ages, um, mm-hmm. but particularly for younger people that that uh, you know got a lot of years left that really. Yeah don't want to wind up all of a sudden, you know, they're 25 pounds overweight and they don't understand why. And then it's really mm-hmm. hard to, to go down that route. So. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Prevention is, I think definitely the key for really anything. And what I'm seeing, because I'm on a, I'm on a community committee about uh, food insecurity. Um, mm-hmm. What I see is the good stuff that's happening is more and more nutritional programs are going into elementary schools. And we've had cases. We've had cases of kids going home and asking their mother for uh, for oranges, and, and maybe the mother didn't. And, but the and, but the mother didn't know what an orange was. Wow. So we, we you know we've got that that element in society that really just you know food is just fast food and it's whatever you can grab quickly. And yeah. but when you get to the kids, um, they like an orange. They like an apple. They like mm-hmm. watermelon. They you love know, stuff. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good to see that. We just hope we can do more of it. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I actually was. I don't know if you know this, but um, in Florida where I live here, there's actually a fully plant-based school um, wow. not too far from where I live. Yeah, and I, I met the founder, and she's just, her story, she had, um, uh, I don't think, was it lupus, but it, it was the auto, I know it was an autoimmune yeah. disorder or something yeah. and really suffered and changed her diet. And so she's just a really big believer in it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was just really cool. I actually got to go speak there yesterday. We watched like a documentary film about, wow. how, you know, food is killing us. Yeah. Um, and then yeah. we had a discussion afterwards and, I've, you know, the parents were able to like ask us questions and it was really really cool to have them like ask us questions, you know, and is that a private school? Yes, it is. It must be a private school. (laughs) That's the only way she's able to do it because of the school lunch program. They, it's mandatory for them to have dairy and she's very against dairy. So she's like, I I do not want to feed dairy to these kids. Um, So Mm -hmm. yeah. So she's had to do a private school, but you know, these, parents and these families are are really interested in it, which is really, really cool to see. Yeah. Yeah. 
How about that? Yeah, yeah. So you, you, landed, like, you landed in the right place. I did. I know. <laughs> I feel so grateful. I'm like, wow, yeah. I really, really came to the right place because I don't think yeah. there's very many or any really plant-based schools. Uh, that's the first I've heard. That's very, yeah. very, very interesting. You know, that's, mm -hmm. um, wow. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's really good. It's very cool. Really very good. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. And I used to, uh, I used to actually teach kids about nutrition and go into the mm -hmm. schools and you could see that, that, you know, the kids were really, were really grasping it and learning. But like you said, like the kids were teaching, had to teach their parents. And I think yeah. that's what I could see like doing that is I could see we're having the effect on the kids, but I could tell there was still a disconnect with the parents and, yeah. you know, they was still very new to them and um, they just didn't, you know, think that their kids would eat these certain foods, but they actually, they actually will. They actually do like it. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 So that's, that's really cool. Really cool. Yeah, absolutely. Like what you're doing. I think it's really important. It's really important, right? To start really helping kids and teaching them about nutrition right early on. So then it's not as hard when you're older and, you know, you have these yeah. chronic diseases and suddenly be in this place where, oh, no, what do I do now? And yeah. Yeah. it's so much harder, right, to change your habits. And, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, like, the, you know, the older you get, the, 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 the more difficult that behavior modification <laughs> becomes. And yeah. Yeah, we, get, we, get, we get habits and we don't like to get out of the habits. But uh, mm -hmm. I will have to just pat myself on the back a little bit. I pretty much my soda intake because I got addicted to Cokes in college because I didn't drink coffee and I never really had a lot of sodas growing up unless I went to the movies yeah. sort of thing. So there was a Coke machine in the dorm and it was only 25 cents and it was easy to grab and it was easy caffeine. And so it really, I just, so in the last year, maybe two, um, there is one, one appears in the house every now and then. Mm -hmm. Um, but for the most part, I'm done. Yeah. For the most part, I'm done. Good. Um, yeah, because uh, there are too many horror stories. There are too many horror stories. So mm -hmm. I hope I haven't waited too late. So anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right. No, I don't I don't think there's I don't uh, think it is ever too late to to really make a change or you know, see some effective mm -hmm. changes that you make. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, the other challenge I have is water. Um, mm -hmm. I drink a lot of water when it's hot mm -hmm. in the summertime, but come wintertime when it's cold, I just, yeah, I don't drink a lot of water. And then, you know, a couple of years ago, I thought I had the flu and it was so bad. I went to a walk-in clinic cause I didn't want to wait for an appointment. Yeah. And I could have sworn I had the flu and they did uh, a blood check and they came back in. They said, um, you're about two glasses of water away from us hooking you up to an IV. You're dehydrated. And this was in February one year. And I said, how can I be dehydrated in February? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I work out at the gym and whatnot, but I'm drinking fluids. No, you're not. You're not drinking enough. Yeah. And honestly, I thought I had the flu. And they said, no, no, you're dehydrated. Mm -hmm. So that, that was a late life lesson for sure. Yeah. So I just got to drink more water. Yeah. I just got to drink more water. And that's, mm -hmm. that's one of my weak points in, in the colder months. I just don't. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of a lot of people that I talk to experience the same thing. They're just like, Kayla, how do I drink more water? It's, it's cold. Yeah. I don't feel like drinking yeah. it. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's definitely so it's so important. Yeah, when you get dehydrated, you do not feel well. <laughs> yeah. You do not feel good. So maybe you know what's the, what's the advantage of having fresh lemon in your water? I've heard that that yeah. in the morning, like it, mm -hmm. like first thing in the morning. What's yeah. What's the nutritional value there? What what happens there? Yeah. Oh, that's a really good question. I don't exactly know what I guess the theory behind it exactly is. It could have to do with just being like a, it's a citrus fruit. So maybe the because it's af, like the what is the word? Um, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, but, yeah. But um. Yeah, I think it's just, it's refreshing. It's also, I think, easier to drink water too when it has something in it. Yeah, um, yeah. 
So like, you know, I always tell people, you know, to try to drink more water. That's one thing I always say, like put fruit in it, put a lemon, you know, cucumber yeah. can be really refreshing yeah. mm-hmm. um, or even drinking with a straw and, you know, or carrying a water bottle with you. Yeah. And also yeah. having it, the, um, you know, having the water temperature good as well mm-hmm. to what you like. So I know some people prefer it cold and some people are like, no, I can't do that. I need a yeah. warm temperature. Um, and that's how my dad is actually, he's like, I have to have it warm temperature. He just yeah. he won't drink it. Um, and I actually leave, I'll leave my water. I usually always have some water with me. I actually, this is what I use. I use one of my run glasses. It's a beer glass that I won third yeah. place at one of my races. <laughs> um, and that's what I keep my water in. <laughs> it's just <laughs> plain water in there. Um, but I like it's. I noticed that it's easier for me to drink warm water, like you oh, know, room temperature water than it is cold huh. water. So I always have it, you know, usually that temperature. Next well, time. I've heard some athletes say the first thing they do in the morning is drink an eight ounce bottle of water before yeah. they, you know, when they get out of bed, that's the first thing they do. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I know mm-hmm. that water, water has a what's a satiating effect. It, it makes you, it kind of fills you up. So you, maybe you're not as hungry. Yes, yes. If yes, you drink yes. more water, you're not as hungry. So you maybe not won't snack as much mm-hmm. um, if you drink water. So yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's also electrolytes as well. It's like elect- yeah. you know, it really yeah. just it's really because your body is mostly made up of water. Right, I think it's seventy so, percent or so. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's like 70, 80 percent of water, mm-hmm. and really, we can only live. You know, we can live without food for seven days, but I think it's we only can live without water for three days. So yeah, if we can't get water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it doesn't take us long. Take us out. Right. Be dehydrated. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's another challenge for me. I guess the two big challenges are reduce my sugar intake mm-hmm. or water. And I'm, I'm, I'm really, um, I mean, definitely eating more, more veggies and more good, grains. Good. Um, I mean, I love rice. I love quinoa, um, good. cabbage, um, spinach, um, mushrooms, peppers, carrots, um, broccoli. Yeah. I mean, all that. I'm fortunate. I really like that stuff. I don't, yeah. it's not a force feed at all. Right. And that's so, good. That's, that's good. really yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. It's good to. It's good to like those foods. It makes it a little bit easier. Um, of course, there's always little habits and things we need to work on, but that's a work in progress. Yeah. Yeah. You'll get yeah. there. Yeah. You'll get there. Sure. Yeah. Definitely. So what is what is in your future? I think we talked, I think we mentioned it a little bit. So you have a triathlon coming up. I think the right. first one in my area is going to be in April. Um, and it's, um, it's a sprint triathlon in a, in a, in a lake. So it'll probably wetsuit legal because it'll be yeah, it'll cold. still be cold. Usually the early triathlons um, have swimming pool swims. Yeah. And then you go outside. So I remember one years ago, the, it was in March and the temperature was 38 degrees that morning. So you got out of the indoor pool, which was great. But then you came outside to get off the bike and it was 38 degrees. Mm. And then you, you know, you're cold. You got wind resistance going on. I mean, it's just like, wow, this is not fun. Yeah. <laughs> this is not fun. <laughs> no. So, no, yeah, around ar- around here, I usually compete in North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia sometimes, mm-hmm. um, just because it's easy to easy to get to. So the season will open up, uh, again, assume, assuming COVID's okay. Um, probably there may be a race in March. Mm-hmm. But then you get into to, uh, April and there, there'll be one about every weekend with exception of holidays and whatnot through the summer, usually. Now, again, mm-hmm. this summer may be different. There was nothing last summer in mm-hmm. my area of the, of the country. So um, we'll see. And they go okay. through October around here. Although I did two of my half Ironmans in November at the coast and we got lucky. The weather was 65 68 degrees it was great wow <laughs> it was great Perfect. yeah yeah so nice. yeah i got lucky there yeah and yeah. one of them then one of them was in october and it was 85 and windy and it was just yeah so anyway mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah so there's awesome. uh, exciting yeah exciting absolutely. right hopefully hopefully let's cross our fingers that. <laughs> yeah they'll be yeah. back they'll be back yeah awesome well, is there it, 
it's really cool to be the blue 70. If you, if there's anybody out there that, you know, is looking for wetsuits or just blue 70, just, they're really great. It's a great company to make great products. They're not over the top expensive. Um, it's just, they're really, really good. They're really good. Cool. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. And is there, is there anything else you'd like to tell anybody or anything to um, leave them with? Yeah. I, I would say, um, do things that you, that, that want, you wind up, and you appreciate and you're grateful that you can do it. You know, whether it's running two miles or running 22 miles, um, ultra marathons, um, whatever uh, in the athletic world, just whatever you do that makes you feel like, wow, you know, I'm really thankful that I can do that. I think that's very, very helpful to your, <clears throat> to your quality of life. Mm -hmm. I really do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You don't have to be the fastest. You don't have to be the fastest. Mm -hmm. I mean, in triathlons, you know, you see all types. You know, there are people with right. 15,000 bikes and there are people with $200 bikes. Yeah. You know, there are people that are way overweight, but they're making an effort. It's so obviously mm -hmm. they're trying to change their lifestyle. Yeah. And they're, they're guys and gals that look like they're pros. So mm -hmm. uh, to me, it's a wonderful sport. And I'm sure running is probably the same way. It is. Yeah. 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 You see people out there and. It, you can't no. believe that they're they're runners, but they're out there. They're doing it. Yeah, they're absolutely. Doing exercise and they're having fun. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think running's fast. Now, I, I happen to see the live um, world records that were broken several weeks ago in the men's 10K. Yeah. And the women's 5K in Spain. I don't know whether mm -hmm. you saw that. No, I didn't. The girl ran four, 5K in 14, 14, 30 something, 14, 40 Ooh. something. That's fast. <laughs> and the guy and the guy ran the 10K in 26.10 or 26.11. Whoa. Now, they had pacers. Wow. Those, those two were going for world records. So they yeah. had pacers. But, I mean, yeah. just to watch that, it's like, wow, that's just. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing it really what the body can do. It really and is. at least this last year for me has been really – controlling my mind and what I tell myself and how much that's like helped my performance. Like, you know, I'm running better than I was in college and high school. And I'm like, it's all because like, I didn't believe that I could be good. <laughs> yeah. Well, a lot of, a lot of it's attitude. Mm -hmm. A lot it of it's is. attitude. It really you know? is. Yeah. And the new word is, is grit. So that's a combination of passion and perseverance. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. Love that. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being sure. here. Sure. Thank you, Kayla. It's a pleasure. Appreciate You're it. welcome. Yes. I, I think it's always great to bring people into this group and, you know, just share your stories and you don't know who you might inspire, um, you know, on their, on their journey. So thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll look forward to, yeah. to your next sessions. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Definitely check them out. Um, and then we'll before I, before we go, does anyone have any questions? I think Amy was here. I don't know if anybody else here is live, but if you do watch this on replay and you do have a question for Bill, you can comment below. I'll make sure I tag him so he sees it to answer, but yeah, I'll be happy to. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Bye. All right, Kayla. Bye-bye. Have a good day. You too.